Well, yeah, I remember when I interviewed Mike Tyson, uh, he said something that still rings in my head to this day. He said, it takes a woman to make you feel like a man. No deleting that we have made for, for we can, for we can know that we're men. The yeah. only reason we can know that we're men is that we have a woman. Yeah. Other than that, we can't, we can't justify for being a man. So yeah. they justify us for being who we are. And people really, they don't understand, you know, heterosexual men just don't understand how important having the right woman is in your life. It could completely transform every asset of your being. But it's got to be a good woman. Exactly. You know, it can't just be anyone. It's got to right. be... It's got to be one that lines up with some real principles um, mm -hmm. that live a different way. Don't, doesn't live for, you know, the worldly perspective of I got to have all this. I got to have all that. Because when I met Tracy, she was different than any woman I ever met. She she wasn't. She wasn't a Gucci bag or Louis Vuitton. You know, she took me shopping at Walmart. I was like, what is Walmart? She's like, this. <laughs> She's like, this is where you need to shop. You need, you need to buy socks, you need to buy shoes, whatever you need to get, because you need to get past all that other stuff. And and that was really eye-opening to me. That really that really hit me because now I realized that she wasn't she wasn't a woman that was tagged to things, you know, being I was like, I was like, Well, why are you so different? She goes, Well, I'm born in the Midwest and this is just the way we live in the Midwest. You know, we don't we don't have to live we don't try to live any fancy lifestyle, you know. You've been in New York and L.A. and all these high big cities, you know, where everything has just been so fancy and stuff like that. But when you live in the Midwest, we're more like family and we live different. And and I was like, wow, you know, because I had never experienced that. And that's what really, really made me follow the road that she was going on because it was different. I mean, you end up doing 11 months in prison during that one stretch. And, and prison is a very, a very harsh place. What was the worst thing you think you experienced while being locked up, especially you being Daryl Strawberry, the baseball star, you know, surrounded by people who, you know, come from the worst parts of society? It, it was very easy for me because I, I came from that. You're growing up in South Central, people don't understand. Growing up in South Central LA, that's real. You know, the streets are real. You know, and the guys I grew up with are some of the same guys that end up going to prison. Now, if you end up, you know, constantly going to prison, which happened to a lot of those guys, uh, they just end up with a number all the time. And nothing's ever changed on the inside. So I was like not I was like not in fear of of going in there you know i mean i grew up in the hood the most you're gonna do is be have to go through is you're gonna have to scrap with somebody if, if that's what you have to do you know i was used to that because every time one of those pitchers hit me on the mound i charged the mound and whooped the <laughs> crap out of them so <laughs> I, I was used to it i was used to it anyway in baseballs so it wasn't like i was right. walking like i'm going to prison i'm I'm scared. I just remember going into the prison and going into the central place in Orlando. And I remember the captain who's running the prison and what he told me was so profound. And he says, he says, you don't belong in here. He says, do your time and don't come back. And that stuck with me because he said, you don't belong in here. He said, you know, it's not looking at you as being better or in, any different than somebody else. You made some mistakes, okay? You never harmed anybody, you only harmed yourself, but he was basically telling me, just do your time and be, be done with it. And, and he was right, you know, he was so right for telling me that because that's what I was looking at, you know? I was looking at doing my time and being, being who I was, you know, and I had a lot of fun, you know? I mean, there's activities, you get to play sports and you get to, smoke cigarettes and you know, you know it's just like anything else you know it's like it's like if you if you keep yourself together and clean and, and stay out of other people's way um don't be boasting about anything while you're there nobody's gonna sweat you there you know i mean it, everybody everybody in the prison i went to was a low camp anyway and had a, it was a treatment facility and everybody was cool there you know everybody's trying to 
recover from something, you know, because everybody wants, a lot of guys have done a lot of time and they got different letters and they've been in and out. It's been a revolving door, you know, of, of 10 years of trafficking and this and that stuff. So a lot of guys go to those camps. They want to be in those camps where there's you know, not a lot of violence. Because when you're on the major yard somewhere and you get in one of those big penitentiaries, which I go into all the time now, but I get to come out, you know, because I go in there and do some ministry. But I'm saying it's, 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 a, it's a different place. And so I never really thought about, you know, being afraid of guys uh, when I was there and, and what nothing really crazy happened. Did somebody try me a few times? Yeah, you know, of course somebody was gonna try, you know, and see, but I was the wrong one. You just don't walk, you know, I was like, it was like, man, that dude is tough, man. <laughs> we thinking of him as a baseball player, but man, he'd be, he's ready to throw down in the heartbeat. And, mm. and when guys see that, they know that they pull back from that. Well, I mean, after you get out, you're no longer a professional baseball player, but baseball still embraced you. Uh, you were an instructor for the New York Mets in 2005, in 2008. Uh, you attended the the Mets 86 World Champion uh, Championship Team Reunion in 2006. And then in 2010, you were inducted into the Mets Hall of Fame. How did that feel? I feel great. You know, I, I came back, came full circle, went back around baseball for a minute and um, enjoyed it did some TV, um, and then I just really, I think what really happened was, was with, with my wife, Tracy, she says, when are you gonna take that uniform off for real? And, um, you know, after going through that whole process of all that, that, that was a very, really defining moment in my life when she asked me what I, you need to take that uniform off, you know? And, and she was right. It was good at the time. I thought I was doing good, but she thought, no, that's not the life that you're supposed to have. You know, you're supposed to be over the uniform. You're supposed to be away. Nothing going back to the reunions, nothing going back and having yourself inducted to the Mets Hall of Fame. All that's good. We celebrate that. But she she was happy for me, but she said, you still got to take that uniform off. You got to get moving. And it was a different direction, different purpose for your life. And she was right. You know, and that's why we talk about having a good woman in your corner to be able to back mm -hmm. you and keep pushing you forward. My wife kept pushing me forward, just like my mother kept believing that I would go on this journey and become this man that she always believed I would be. So my wife felt the same way. And, and, and I, I started to really look at that and really, look, really evaluate that real hard and, and say, you know, cause yeah, I could have kept going. Yeah, I could have kept going being a TV analyst, analyst and all these different things like a lot of other sports. But it, she just felt like it was something bigger for me to do. And I needed to do it before this life was over. You know, I had already been to the top of the mountain. Nobody's there. You, you, you get up there and you're up there by yourself. You got a bunch of, you, gotta, you, you become a fool because you're at the top of the mountain and you got a bunch of fools running with you. So where are you going? <laughs> You know, because th this is all it is with, with people that run with people who who have had success because they have never had that like them. But as you notice for yourself, when you get up there, there's really nothing else up here. You know, where's the reality? Where's your real life? You know, we 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 lose our family because of playing sports. We won't walk away. You lose your family. And then you all along again in the wilderness by yourself. Now you're still chasing and the girls are still chasing after you. And it just had to be more to life than that. And my wife wanted me to be able to see that. And after those years of, of coming back and, and doing all that with baseball and, and being around it, she was right. I, I, I pulled myself out of it. I, I had to. I had to take a different journey. 